This is Retirement News Online. As a business owner, when you sell your business, you may face a significant tax bill. In fact, if you're not careful, you can wind up with less than half of the purchase price in your pocket after all the taxes are paid. However, with skillful planning, it's possible to minimize or defer at least some of these taxes. And my guest is Nathan Burt with Epic Trust Financial Group located in Kennewick, Washington. Nathan, thanks for talking with us today. Uh, talk about ordinary income versus capital gains in a business sale. Yeah, so you want to avoid ordinary income as much as possible. Ordinary income is going to take you up to 37% as far as the tax bracket goes, whereas capital gains can be taxed as low as 0% and max at about 20%. And so the first thing you want to do when you sell a business is you want to allocate what things you're selling. And the more allocation you can provide to intangible assets that uh, and long-term assets, the better off you're going to be, and you're going to qualify for that favorable capital gain tax treatment. You also want to consider timing. Timing is huge when you're selling something big like a business. Uh, so first of all, you want to make sure that you've held it for a la at least a year so you get the long-term capital gain rate, which is much better than short-term, which is essentially the same thing as ordinary income. Uh, second, uh, timing can be a big issue in terms of time of the year. Let's say that you're on a high salary with a business that you own and you sell on January 1 instead of December 31. Well, maybe all of your income for that year is capital gain income taxed between zero and 20% instead of on top of your high wage. And so you could have a 37% plus a 20% on the capital gain. And so timing can be a huge deal when, when you're thinking about selling something like a business. Nathan, now talk about short-term versus long-term capital gains. Yeah, so the government incentivizes people to hold on to capital assets for longer. And so they consider long-term capital gains if you've held on to an asset for 12 months or longer. So that comes into play for stocks, for businesses, or other tangible and intangible assets. And so uh, if if it's possible, you generally want to do anything in your power to hold that asset for longer than a year, and you'll achieve a lot better results. So Nathan, when and how does using a retirement account make sense? Yeah, so retirement accounts are uh, an important tool. It's one of the variables that you have to play with in terms of your tax bracket. Tax bracket determines the capital gain tax rate. So let's say you're on the cusp of the 12% or the 22% tax bracket right before you sell that asset. Uh, if you can get your uh, tax bracket down through the use of a retirement account, uh, then you may have achieved a 0% capital gain rate on a portion of that sale. So that, the tax bracket and the interplay of that retirement account can be very important. Nathan, finally, talk about using exchanges in the sale of a business. We see a lot of exchanges with our clients. We have a lot of clients with, with real estate. And so if they're looking for a different type of property or a property in a different state, or maybe they want to getting close to retirement and they want to swap out a rental house in the town they live in for one in the town their kids live in or in a vacation spot they like to use, uh, they may use a, a tax deferred exchange. You, now keep in mind, you have to go through an intermediary, so the money can't go to you, it's got to go to this third party and then to the new property. Uh, but it's a way to preserve your family's uh, wealth and pass it down to future generations and you get a new property without uh, you paying taxes or your kids paying taxes. And then when your kids inherit that property, uh, they don't have to pay any taxes on it from the step up and basis at your death. My guest has been Nathan Burt in Kennewick, Washington. Thanks for watching Retirement News Online.